I'm really excited to introduce our first keynote. Uh, I met Kwame Ulmer through MedTech Color, where he is a founding member and serves on the board of directors. In addition, Kwame is a MedTech executive, lecturer, and researcher with over 20 years of government and private sector experience. At Ulmer Ventures, he integrates his time working as an operating company executive, evaluating over 1,000 technologies at the FDA, advising early stage companies, and providing formal business education to help clients set a clear regulatory strategy and deliver on key milestones. So welcome, Kwame. Oh, thank you so much, Ingrid. I will share my screen and begin, because I know we have a program with, uh, with, uh, with, with a timeline associated with it. Um, so it's my distinct pleasure to speak with you for the next few moments about uh, my journey in MedTech. Uh, and I have a few key uh, conclusions that I've made over the years. Uh, my story in this industry really begins at the FDA. I spent 12 wonderful years there where I was fortunate enough to evaluate medical device applications and participate in all aspects of regulation. I was fortunate enough to leave after uh, having served as a deputy director for four and a half of those 12 years where I signed 510K clearances and was involved in all types of application reviews. I transitioned to a role at Danaher where I led regulatory and quality. And it took my family to beautiful, uh, Thousand Oaks, California, which is a suburb of Los Angeles. Along that journey, founded MedTech Color, and I got laid off. The two aren't connected. Founding MedTech Color and getting laid off are not connected. Uh, and I share that because uh, there are some valuable lessons I gleaned from that, um, and I want to talk about them for a brief moment. I launched a regulatory strategy consulting firm called uh, Omer Ventures. It's being rebranded to MedTech Impact Partners, so be on the lookout for that. And I've been fortunate enough and do serve as an advisor to the NIH and I lecture on healthcare entrepreneurship at UCLA in the Anderson School of Management. And last but not least, I serve as a venture partner. So some of you are of a generation where you use this term, make it make sense, make it make sense. I do a fair amount of things uh, and I'm comfortable with that. It took me a while to get comfortable with it because for most of my career, I went into a building, I did a particular job, I went home, had dinner, kissed my wife, and then went to sleep. Well, now I'm uh, intimately involved in three distinct enterprises. One is a consulting firm, MedTech Impact Partners. Uh, the second is a venture capital firm, and the third is a nonprofit. They're all focused on impacting patients and are all focused on MedTech. And I'm super comfortable with that because of patterns I've seen for people who are successful at the level at which I want to be successful. And I'll talk about that a bit more. So let's talk about, for a brief moment, a setback for me professionally. Uh, when I was in Thousand Oaks leading a business, uh, about a, about a uh, $100 million business, uh, we had to issue a series of recalls that led me to um, have to work shoulder to shoulder with the amplified team of complaint handlers. And it also led me to have to come in on the weekends to do data entry. And that wasn't what I had signed up for. I found it the most excruciatingly boring thing to be involved in a recall. It was important, but it was painful. And I did not see the value in it at all, at all. It was the worst. But what it led to years later was me being cited on the specific topic of how to have handle a recall in multiple industry outlets and being asked to serve as an expert witness on, guess what, the recall process. Uh, and my key takeaway is what seems like a problem at the time and a challenge can turn into a blessing later on in one's career. And you can provide real value having gone through something that was painful at the time, but you develop deep expertise in it. And it turns out recalls are a key function in our industry. The setup, I've been interested in investing for many years. Uh, and I met a gentleman at the FDA who was a Kaufman Fellow. And a Kaufman Fellowship is 
uh, the platinum program for folks who want to enter into VC. I applied, I got accepted, but I also got accepted to business school and I decided to go to business school. But during that process, I learned one, it's very difficult to enter venture capital, but there were certain profiles and patterns for those who had. And for me, what was most applicable was to start with angel investing. And that was only possible because my wife and I had consciously decided for 20 years to be fastidious savers. So we had the ability to uh, angel invest. That led to inviting a local investor, venture capitalist to serve on a panel I was moderating. We looked at a deal together and they had a need for someone to join this emerging venture capital fund. I was employee number three <laughs> uh, to help them raise capital and really lead a med tech practice. And those two things led to me joining as a venture partner in Waymaker 360 Health. At the time, we probably had raised about $3 million. Now we have approximately $80 million in assets under management. But I will tell you that this does not always involve pay and it involves a certain amount of sacrifice, but essentially it involves starting with nothing. This concept of starting with a bird in the hand. And I believe it to my core that you start with what you have uh, and step by step move to where you want to where you want to be. The comeback. So I've been uh, able to study the what I believe are the playbooks and patterns of people who have succeeded success in, in, in their professional lives. And often it starts with developing domain expertise, being exceptionally good at what you do. And that is generally uh, accumulated over years of work. I, another key act that I believe is important is to immerse yourself in a community. For me, it's MedTech. And for me, that meant when I moved to LA, volunteering with MedTech Innovator, uh, volunteering with Scale Health, really getting embedded in the ecosystems that were about what I was about. And um, demonstrating that I had something valuable to share. And for me, it was regulatory expertise. And I want to highlight this notion of weak ties, which again, I learned in business school. And it's this notion that some of your best referrals, best, re best professional introductions come from not your primary core circle of professional friends, but those secondary friends, those weak ties. It's whole research of, uh, in social science around how you can get all these advantages from introductions from people who aren't in your core circle. And for me, they've paid off. The MTC story. It started uh, for me having attended Avamed, the Industry Trade Association, where I would meet every year with my mentor. We would have coffee. And I lamented how lonely it is to be an African-American man in this medical device industry. And she, was the first person to see the magic in the idea and encouraged me to develop it. Uh, then I shared this desire to start something with the HR leader at Danaher, whose name is Ernest Adams. And the conversation was efficient, quick, because he saw the magic in the idea and he put his dollars behind it. So we had a dinner organized by Corn Ferry where Danaher, first of all, paid for a lovely dinner for 15 uh, leaders in the medical device industry. And he also, uh, uh, invested $25,000, yeah. it was the first check-in to the organization. And what's key for me is our interests aligned and people saw not necessarily the value in me, but the magic in the idea. And at that same dinner, a colleague of mine, he runs New Sparrow, a neuromodulation uh, company based in San Francisco and in Dallas, Texas. He said, Kwame, I never spend time on people who don't see the magic in my idea. And that just stuck with me. It stuck with me in a major way because ultimately time is, some argue, our most valuable resource. And you, in my estimation, should spend it with people who see the magic in the idea. And that's what Ernest Adams saw. That's what my mentor, Michelle McMurray, he saw. That's what the leader at Corn Ferry saw. And now we're an organization with uh, 2,000 uh, stakeholders, and we are on track to invest 
nearly a half a million dollar in early stage companies that are managed and controlled by African Americans and Latinx persons of color. And that's all because people see the magic in the idea. I'll talk briefly about getting known and a little bit about what I believe is a myth of meritocracy. Even though I talked to, <laughs> for the last couple of minutes about getting domain expertise, I think a key element of success is not just having some level of competence, but getting known. Getting known not just by anyone, by people, but by people who can accelerate your career. I lived in DC for many years and I uh, was active in, in my fraternity and the alumni chapter, and I chose to run for president. And a man, and this is a group of um, professionals, doctors, lawyers, politicians, all based in what you consider, some people consider the most powerful city in the world. And the key pieces of advice I got was one, to identify my program, and two, to get known. That's how the old folks would say it. Say, they said to me, Kwame, you need to get known. And that advice has stood me in good stead. Uh, it is really important for once you have identified your program, your value, to reach out to people and get known. Not in a um, overly, uh, as the young people say, thirsty way. And ambition is not a bad thing, but in a very deliberate manner. Because what is key to success is who knows you and who knows your value. Meritocracy takes you to a certain point, but it is critical in my estimation that you get on the radar of people who are in a position to support you. I'm so thankful to have been able to spend some time with you and talk about uh, what's important to me in terms of my professional journey. And I look forward to spending the next hour with you in conversation. I wanna thank Ingrid for the time. I saw many of my friends out there, Kelly's in the house, Brooke from ResMed is in the house. Uh, Derek is here, a MedTech Color participant from last year. I look forward to just um, chatting it up with you all for the next, uh, next hour or so. And thank you again, Ingrid, for your time.